Politics in Jesus' time was a combination of local, native, religious, and foreign entities. Each side wanted something for their interests. Religion and politics were the same and could be in conflict. What were the different Jewish religious groups? Who did they despise? What role did the Romans have in Judea? What was Jesus' role and portrayal? What were the different forms of politics in Judea? Find out today on Roman history, religious groups, the Sadducees believed in no resurrection and took a literal interpretation of the Torah. Also, they were legalistic. According to Josephus, he portrayed them as having wealthy supporters, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection, influenced politics. Were less legalistic, and took a more loose interpretation of the Torah. In the Gospels, the portrayal was negative due to the many disagreements between the Christians and the Pharisees. However, they agreed on the resurrection and the afterlife. Later, the Pharisees served in a Jerusalem church community. The Roman Jewish historian Flavius Josephus portrayed them as having the people's support and living simpler lives, which suggested a more positive view. They were witnesses of Jesus during his ministry as mostly the opposition, except for Nicodemus, a reference from John 3. They saw Jesus as a traitor and deceiver to the Jews. The Essenes were in the Qumran community and wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. Their priests were leaders and led a hierarchical society. The Samaritans lived in Samaria, which was in central Palestine. They were once Jews and had separated for being heretics. Their revered mountain was Mount Gerizim. The similarity was the use of the Pentateuch, which was the first five books of the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. However, the Samaritans' version was different in some ways, Jews and Romans, the Jews also despised the tax collectors for serving Rome, dishonesty, and extorting money from others. Jesus accepted Matthew or Levi in the Gospel of Luke, who was a tax collector, which would be a radical perspective from the Jews. Since they met in Capernaum, a fishing village, Matthew might have given contracts to fishermen for fishing supplies in exchange for them giving some of their profit to the tax collectors. In addition, the auctions allowed the highest bidder to be the tax collector. The Jews paid tithes, which was a 10% tax. In this case, it imposed on crops and flocks, St. Mary's Press 5. Also, religious leaders like priests and Levites got tithes on crops. In addition, there were taxes on offerings like sin. However, poor people could offer one of three choices based on affordability. From expensive to cheap, it could be an animal, two birds, or flower. Finally, every adult Jewish male, St. Mary's Press 6, paid an annual temple tax. Politics, in Roman Judea, village politics was an integral asset but did not get as much of a perspective as the cities and religious groups. Josephus mentioned there were about 200 villages. The semi-autonomous village assemblies focused on common prayers, constitution of courts of elders to deal with local conflicts, and appointment of villagers to repair the town water supply, Hosley 37. There were problems with bandits, their leaders in Siphorus and Tiberius, and strikes. The peasants were willing to defend their lands against the bandits, Jesus focused on the village communities as a teacher and healer. The hungry and debt-ridden people flocked to him and believed in him. Which resulted in him becoming like a family. Jesus preached for a new Israel to return to its true glory with God through renewal and repentance, an attractive proposition. Roman politics was another significant factor in the province of Judea. Rome conquered Judea, but there was a long resistance between the Romans and the natives. Zealots attacked the Romans, but there were non-violent methods, speaking and rhetoric. On and off, revolts occurred through popular and messianic movements, opposing the Roman tribute and scribes committing non-violent resistance to return to serve the Temple of Jerusalem. Before Jesus' birth, Judea was a client state under Herod the Great, and his superior was Emperor Augustus. After Herod's death, it became a Roman province, and Publius Quinctilius Verus was the governor. 
The Roman tax system had a relationship between the clients and the patrons. These patrons were the elites, and client states stayed loyal to their superior. They had taxes on income, roads, ports, crops, and for every male over fourteen and every female over twelve in a family was assessed a tax of one denarius, approximately the daily wage of a laborer, St. Mary's Press 5. Also, in the Herodian dynasty, there was tribute for them. Crucifixion was a Roman punishment, and criminals put on wooden crosses. It served as a form of torture and a warning, Jesus challenged the Roman emperor's authority. There were other opposers, Herod Antipas, who saw Jesus as a threat. Finally, the high priests were against him for saying the destruction of the Second Temple of Jerusalem, which was there after the Babylonian exile. However, Jesus used love and nonviolence to get his message to the people, healing ailments, calling for renewal, or freeing people from demonic possession. To them, they saw him as a prophet. Like others, he invoked Moses, David, and the prophets before him. Unlike his predecessors, he focused on justice for all people. Conclusion, life in Roman Judea in Jesus' time was tumultuous, unstable, and uncertain for the people. Movements came and went, and different groups clashed with one another. However, the intricacies, complexities, and interconnectedness were undeniable. It impacted all sides and led to long-term implications, Roman-Jewish wars. The formation and rise of Christianity, and the diaspora, thanks for watching and please like, comment, subscribe, and enable notifications to see more of my videos.